I bless you, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. And um, this is the second time I've gotten to talk to Father Fodius Savant in uh, Texas. And uh, today I wanted to talk to him. This is way outside my field of expertise, is the filioque. And I didn't even know what it was until um, I had ri I've, I've written, I'll, I'll talk about it with Father in a couple of minutes, maybe. I had written a piece uh, on my blog, and then I, I started hearing some side issues of the filioque. Really quick, um, uh, before I before I uh, talk to Father, um, uh, and please correct me, Father, because like I said, this is you know I don't I, this is hard for me to to understand and to even um, understand why it's important. But I, I was hoping you could help me. Um, the filioque is, is a teaching in the, the Christian church that um, it comes from John chapter 15 in the New Testament. And it's that um, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. But in the Roman Catholic creed, um, and I've said it probably a thousand times and I never even didn't know what I was saying. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. Yes, sir. So it's kind of like, so what? What's the difference? That's that's when I first yeah. when I first it, looked it's it just up. One word, it's just one word in the Latin, right? What's the big deal? You know. What is Father? What why does it why is it important? Well, um you, you know, um in confessing the Lord Jesus Christ as the eternal Son of God. Um, th there, um, there are a whole host of things that accompany that, um, you, you know, um, what is ultimately authoritative is this, at least, you know, in the apostolic church in, in the Orthodox church, um, what is ultimately authoritative is the confession of who Jesus Christ is. Um, um, you know, he asks the apostles, whom do you say that I am? And Peter's answer, I say that you are the Christ, the son of God. That is the correct answer. And Christ's response to this is all important. Um, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven has revealed this to you. And I say that you are Peter, that is, you are Rocky. <laughs> uh, uh, and on this rock, I will build my church uh, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, what the rock is, um, St. Augustine of Hippo tells us is the confession of St. Peter, his confession that, that, that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Um, St. Augustine is adamant about this, as are um, uh, other church fathers in the East. And so in confessing this, um, uh, this, uh, uh, this leads us uh, to everything else that is attached to this. Um, that is the principality of the Father, um, uh, but also the, uh, the procession of the Holy Spirit. Um, that that Yahweh, um, he who is or he who causes to be, uh, exists in three divine persons, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And um, this is the deposit of faith, uh, which is given to the church. It's an interesting thing uh, when uh, when you think about it, that um when the church um, begins to, you know, exist and, uh, you know, kind of identify itself, um, not necessarily in opposition to the synagogue, uh, but as being distinct from the synagogue, um, uh, that uh, the first thing that the church does is not sit down and write write down a systematic theology of everything that we absolutely believe and all the ins and the outs. Um, rather, uh, the church lives this faith. Um, it lives this confession um, uh, primarily through worship, uh, uh, you know, meeting together um, for the, the breaking of the bread, 
uh, you know, uh, meeting daily for the prayers, you know, uh, confessing the Lord Jesus um, and um, and, you know, being uh, the church. The um, the New Testament scriptures uh, come to us and the first of those scriptures are the epistles. Uh, um, St. Paul's epistles. Um, he makes reference to gospel in these epistles. Um, and yet, uh, when St. Paul first begins writing epistles, not one of the four canonical gospels has been written down, okay. you know, um, uh, with, uh, with the passage of time, as the apostles begin to die, uh, then the canonical gospels are written down um, and they're kept in the church very early on um, uh, in uh, the uh, most of what we now call the New Testament uh, is ubiquitous throughout the church by the beginning of the second century. And it's kept together in two codices, uh, two bound editions. There's one codex that has the four gospels and one codex that has the epistles of uh, the epistles of St. Paul, um, as well as, I believe, the first epistle of John. Um, and every church had these. Um, um, the scriptures are not separate from uh, this confession of who Christ is, which we refer to as the apostolic tradition. Uh, the Orthodox Church, uh, uh, you know, apostolic tradition is the confession of who Jesus Christ is. You know, um, uh, the, uh, the scriptures we do not consider to be separate from tradition, nor indeed even distinct from it. Um, rather, it is, it is the written expression of the tradition. Uh, it is the written expression of the deposit of faith. What, we, uh, what has been shown to us, what has been revealed to us to be true in the person of Christ Jesus our Lord. One of these things which has been shown to us to be true is the existence of uh, and the leading of the Holy Spirit, um, uh, you know, whom we refer to in terms of um, uh, Nicene uh, terminology, the third person of the Holy Trinity, you know, um, and um, it is um, uh, it is necessary for us um, to, um, uh, to maintain all that has been handed down to us uh, within the church. Uh, Saint Vincent of Lorraine, uh, uh, the, uh, the Gallic bishop in um, the, uh, the fifth century, insisted that the, the Catholic church teach only those things which were believed in all places at all times by all the faithful. Um, and this is referred to as the Vincentian canon. And he expresses this in his commonetry against all heresies and innovations. It's totally worth the read. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's great. Um, one, he's one of the giant Western fathers of the church. Um, uh, so because of this, uh, the church makes a fuss with regard to um, with regard to what we understand about God, what we understand about the Holy Trinity, what we understand about the Person of Christ, um, uh, you know, uh, there are some who you know ask you know the Orthodox, well, you know, why do you guys make such a big fuss? You know, I mean, uh, you know, what what what's the big deal? You know, I mean, you know, Jesus is Jesus. You know, uh, God is God. Uh, well, that is not self-evident. Uh, uh, we have to go with uh, what has been revealed to us. What do we mean by that when we say that? I think the same people who would ask, uh, you know, well, why do you guys get so bent out of shape about certain things? Um, I think for the most part, they would say, uh, they would say, well, the church needed to defend the divinity of Christ at the Council of Nicaea. It's like, okay, well, why get so bent out of shape about that? I mean, so what if the sun is a creation? You know, what's oh, the big deal? That may, you know, that's, a big, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's a huge deal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and the church rightfully got bent out of shape about it uh, and met in council to address it uh, in the year 325. Um, and at 
that council, the first half of what we call the symbol of faith or the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed was written. Um, uh, the first half, which includes the clauses about the father and the son. And uh, the clause uh, regarding the son is the most lengthy of all of the clauses in the, uh, the creed. The church. Um, uh, Father. Has, yes. Father, what do you mean? What do you mean by clause? Uh, it, just um, a, a portion portion of the creed, which talks about a certain thing. Um, okay. the, lo the largest portion of the creed talks about Jesus, okay. you know, and I believe, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, um, uh, uh, the son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the father before all ages, everything that comes after that. There's a lot uh, that deals with Jesus in the creed um, uh, because all of that had been challenged uh, by Arius. Arius uh, was challenging all of these notions and uh, the church had to articulate more clearly uh, uh, you know, what she means when she says she believes in the one Lord Jesus Christ. That, that was the Arian heresy, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. It's important also to remember that doctrine, um, uh, doctrine does not, uh, at least for the Orthodox, does not develop. It's not something that develops with the course of time and lots of beard stroking and, uh, you, you know, lots of writing of treatises Doctrine doesn't develop. Um, it is more clearly articulated with the passage of time, but it does not develop. That is, the deposit of faith is always there. And the church speaks up when that deposit of faith is um, challenged or blasphemed in any way. And in the case of Arius, uh, 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 you know, maligning the divinity of Christ, the church met in council to deal with that. Um, uh, the problem was not immediately put down. Uh, it, you know, Arianism continued for a few centuries. Uh, in fact, uh, Arians uh, got a great deal of traction um, throughout the empire, both in the East and in the West. Uh, and the first version that many Western Europeans heard of the gospel was in fact the Arian gospel. Um, uh, so, it, you know, that's one of those things. The second ecumenical council, which met in Constantinople in 381, um, dealt with um, uh, another group of heretics, uh, the Pnevmatomachians, or, or the fighters against the spirit. And they were asserting that the Holy Spirit is not God. Uh, uh, they're like, well, it, you know, he's, he's not God. He's more of a thing, you know. Um, and a, cre church, a, cre a creature. Yeah, yeah, a creature. Uh, and uh, the church uh, addressed this. And, uh, and this is the Constantinopolitan half of the creed, where we start, where uh, talk about the Holy Spirit, about the church, about uh, baptism, and about the resurrection from the dead. Um, but, um, but the church uh, assembled in council, um, uh, you know, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, articulated, and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is both worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. Um, uh, this is uh, this clause regarding the Holy Spirit is considerably shorter than the clause uh, regarding the Son, um, uh, but uh, it is in every way necessary because it articulates that the Holy Spirit is indeed God and Lord. He is the giver of life, um, uh, that he, he is the one who spoke by the prophets, and that he proceeds from the Father. OK, that is, he receives his being from the father. He is not created. He proceeds from the father. Um, the son receives his being from the father. Uh, you know, again, he's not created. He's begotten, uh, begotten, not made of one wow. essence with the father uh, by whom all things were made. Uh, uh, the uh, the son is the agent of creation. Um the, uh, the Holy Spirit um, uh, proceeds from the Father. So he has, he has his being in the Father, um, uh, but in a different manner from that of the Son. Um, but he proceeds in his entirety from the Father. 
How do we know this? Well, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said it, uh, and he said it in those words uh, that, uh, that uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, I will send you another comforter uh, who proceeds from the Father. He made no mention of himself. Uh, he made no mention of himself. He said uh, that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. Now, there are some who quickly counter uh, that, well, he was speaking as man. And so, uh, and so uh, you know, for, for that reason, he didn't say, well, you know, uh, uh, and, from, uh, uh, and from myself. Um, uh, but uh, but this, is, uh, this is not the case because he said that he would send the Holy Spirit. Um, well, was he speaking as man when he said that he would send the Holy Spirit? No, he is, he is speaking as God-man, okay? And, and again, the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't say some things as God and some things as man. He is the <laughs> God. Right. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, 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 to kind of try to, um, you know, separate those things out kind of smacks of Nestorianism. Um, uh, which, uh, uh, which is something that the church uh, would have to deal with in the fifth century. Um, uh, but, uh, but this has been shown to us uh, very clearly. Um, uh, St. Basil the Great, one of the Cappadocian fathers, uh, who himself uh, was instrumental in the Second Ecumenical Council uh, in Constantinople in uh, 381, um, wrote an entire treatise called On the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, you can read it right now. Uh, go to New Advent, uh, uh, and, uh, and you can see the whole text of it uh, right there. Uh, at no point does St. Basil say anything about the holy spirit proceeding from the son as well as the father um and the so, roman and the roman catholic church recognizes saint basil as a saint so yes yeah yeah positively yeah. um um you, you know uh, as well as uh, as well as leo the great uh, uh recognizing him as a saint uh whom and, and he had the creed uh of cast in silver uh, shields, uh, one in Latin and one in Greek. Uh, and uh, he did not include uh, the filioque um, uh, addendum uh, in either one. You know, uh, he, uh, he was aware of it, but uh, you know, he, didn't, uh, he didn't include it. So this begs the question, where does it come from and how does it grow and is, how does it come to be a thing? Yeah. Well, um, as I said, Arianism is something that uh, the church in, the, in both the East and the West had to contend with uh, for quite some time. And um, the church in Toledo, Spain, uh, certainly was no exception. The church in Toledo, Spain, de uh, decided that they needed to somehow kind of um, go an extra mile to defend the divinity of the Son. And they were the first to insert uh, the filioque into uh, the clause regarding the Holy Spirit in order to defend the divinity of the Son. Uh, 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 they, they saw this as, you know, a good and necessary measure. Now, it's kind of like, you know, a three-year-old trying to improve a Rembrandt uh, by, you know, finger painting over it, you, you know, um, uh, particularly because the creed the, the longest portion of it talks about the Lord Jesus Christ and about his divinity and about his humanity. It doesn't leave any stone unturned, you know, so there's really not any need to improve upon it. Um, uh, they decided to start using it uh, and, uh, you know, in order to defend uh, the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the reason for wanting to do it is noble wanting to defend the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, um, in, in, in um, holding up something that is correct, we need to make sure that we don't ourselves go into error, you know, uh, which is precisely what happened here. Uh, yes, it is defending the divinity of the Son, but at the expense of the divinity of the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, you know, this is uh, the problem with... Um, uh, the, um, it, it, the, the usage of it, you know, um, spreads through the West. And then finally in the ninth century, it is Pope Nicholas I who insists, um, that it be included in the Crete. 
Um, and is, uh, is this before 1054? So this is before. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. This is this is in uh, this is in the the uh, uh, this is in the ninth century, uh, the eight hundreds, uh, the second half of the uh, ninth century. Okay. Um, and I should uh, I should tell people that don't know that's 1054 was the official split between the the yeah it, it's kind of a symbolic date okay, uh, okay. Yeah, that 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 we that we kind of agree upon as you know when uh, when uh, the West departs from the East uh, and you know it's kind of a symbolic date because it's not like you know in 1054 everyone in the West got the memo uh, that just didn't happen. Uh, it, it, you know, in <laughs> fact, there, you know, there would continue to be intercommunion uh, uh, for, you know, more than a century. You know, what really drove the point home was the Fourth Crusade, yeah. you know, uh, where the Crusaders that, showed that, up. That, yeah, that was difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and started killing everybody. And it's just like, oh, wow, hmm, maybe we're not on the same page. You know, uh, that's when it was made real for everyone, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is all uh, before 1054. Um, uh, uh, at the same time, uh, the um, uh, the Pope of Rome um, was uh, asserting that he had supremacy of jurisdiction um, uh, over even the four other patriarchates of the East, um, and um, uh, these two matters, uh, the purported supremacy of the Pope of Rome and um, the uh, heresy of the double procession of the Holy Spirit were addressed in a church council uh, in Constantinople between 890 and 891. We don't often refer to this council um, uh, uh, because nobody actually got disciplined. Um, there were legates from the Church of Rome who actually accepted the council's correction, saying, yeah, the filial way should not be inserted into the creed, and the Pope of Rome has jurisdiction over the West alone. And wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's it. They, uh, they, they take the minutes of the council back to, um, at this time, it is John the eighth, uh, who is Pope. Um, he reads it, signs it, says, this is good. This is, this is the Catholic faith. Um, and, and we thought that was that. <laughs> uh, so imagine our surprise when Cardinal Humbert shows up in 1054 and lays the bull of excommunication on the altar of Hagia Sophia. You know, so uh, uh, we, we, we thought the matter had been uh, dealt with. Um, the problem uh, that, the, that the Orthodox Church has with the Filioque, uh, as I said, is that it subverts the, uh, the divinity of the Holy Spirit um, uh, and his eternality. Um, if, he if he receives part of his being from the Father and part from the Son, um, then he is composite. Um, he is not simple as the Father and as the Son. Uh, and in that regard, if he is composite, then he, can he cannot be said to be co-eternal with either of them. Ugh, he, is okay. he, is he is posterior to them. And he becomes a creature, or if you don't want to refer to him as a creature, you know, kind of, uh, you know, a byproduct or an energy, you know. Um, uh, this is um, uh, all of the logical problems uh, with the uh, double procession of the Holy Spirit are uh, magnificently addressed in uh, the Mystagogy of the Holy Spirit, which was written by Photius of Constantinople. Um, uh, and you can read all kinds of nasty stuff about Photius of Constantinople on New Advent. Um, uh, 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 I, I would, however, point out that it was a Czech Roman Catholic priest, uh, Father Francis Bornick, who really successfully rehabilitated uh, uh, Photius and, and his memory saying, OK, you know, what you guys have been saying about him for centuries and centuries just simply is not true. Um, uh, and, um, uh, but, but yeah, his, his, um, Photius's treatise, The Mystagogy of the Holy Spirit, addresses all of the problems uh, which come about because of the double procession. Um, uh, it, you know, and there are too many of them, uh, to, uh, to cover in, uh, in the course of, uh, uh you know, uh, an interview, but, it, you know, needless to say that there's the one that, I addressed. Um, you know, there is the problem of the confusion of the persons of the Father and the Son. 
um, Anselm of Canterbury would later um, uh, pipe up to the defense of the Filioque and, and say, well, it's absurd um, uh, what the Easterners say, you know, that he proceeds in part from the father and in part from the son. He proceeds in his entirety from the father and in his in entirety from the son. Okay, so what that does is confuse the persons of the father and the son. Are the father and the son actually one person? And we're dealing with, you know, a dyadic, uh, uh, you know, Godhead here, you know, is, is that the case? Because that's where Anselm of Canterbury takes it, you know, um, uh, it, you know, all of that, um, it, you know, all of that is to say, uh, and I, I will say this, that, um, you, you know, I was brought up in the Roman Catholic Church um, and, um, uh, and, uh, and, and remained uh, Roman Catholic until I was 23. Um, you, you know, in my um, uh, adult life, even, you know, both in uh, childhood, but also in my adult life, um, I've heard priests and bishops, um, you, you know, make this um, filioquist argument uh, regarding the Holy Trinity, saying that, um, I, I, I think I even heard Bishop Barron say this, that the, the Father is the lover, the Son is the beloved, and the Holy Spirit is the love between them. Uh, now, okay. Joseph, what's the problem with this picture? Okay, the Father, well, that's a person, uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry, the lover, the, uh, that, that's a person, the beloved, well, that's also a person, but the love between them, again, the love comes posterior. Yeah. To them. Uh, yeah. It, you know, it, it's, uh, it, you know, it's like, you know, the father and the son got together and then they had the Holy Spirit. It doesn't work. Uh, uh, it, it, you know, that is not, uh, that is not what the church has ever taught. Um, uh, and, um, and, and it, it proves problematic in so many ways. The Father, uh, you know, father in the ahead. space, father in the space that I move in sometimes, and I'll, I want to bring that up a little later with you. Sure. It, it is problematic in the LGBT space. Mm. One thing yeah. I'm, I, I'm confessing, father, I'm stretching myself intellectually to keep up with you. So, <laughs> but, but I mean, one thing that, that it's not what's in scripture. In scripture, it says who proceeds from the father. Yes, sir. Those are the say, words that, yeah, those are the words of Jesus Christ himself. Okay, then well, then it seems so basic to me, the issue. Well, that's what's in scripture. Well, that, it seemed basic to us, too. <laughs> uh, and, you know, we're, 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 we're still wondering what the problem is. You know, Jesus said it. Uh, it you know, why do we need to dress it up? Why do we need to improve it? Why do we need to change it? Uh, we don't. Uh, you know, he said it for a reason. You know, um, uh, it, you know, uh, it, it doesn't need further expounding upon, you, you know, uh, you know, he says it, that's it. You Father, know. I haven't been to a bunch of OCA liturgies. You're, you're, you're in the Orthodox Church of America, but, yes, but I have, I have been to a number of roll core Russian Orthodox liturgies. And I've noticed that the creed is the same as the Catholic yes, Church, except for this. Is that, is that correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. Uh, in, in all other regards, um, you know, it's uh, it's the same. Um, uh, but this is one notable difference. Yeah. And it would be a big it would be a big hindrance to any kind of unification between. Oh, positively. Uh, well, uh, because, uh, you know, the um, the problem for us, you, you know, in every um, uh, uh, in every divorce, you know, there's his side of the story and there's her side of the story. Um, and, um, you know, the Roman Catholic Church says that we are in schism. Um, um, uh, uh, but from our perspective, we say, well, uh, the Church of Rome is in heresy. Um, uh, uh, that um, that's what the double procession of the Holy Spirit is. It is heresy. It is false teaching uh, regarding the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is not what has been communicated to us in the scriptures, um, uh, the, in the Old Testament or the New Testament. Uh, this has not been communicated to us um, uh, by, you know, any of the... Um, uh, and any of the fathers, any of the luminaries of the church, it just, it, that has not been the case, you know, um, and we have a problem with it because it moves the goalposts. This is why heresy is so dangerous, 
you know, uh, uh, when when you make you know a, a notable change regarding um, dogma or doctrine, the end goal changes. It, it it positively changes. You've moved the goalposts. So this is why we can't be okay with it because it distorts our understanding of the Holy Spirit. It subverts the unity of the Holy Spirit, which is predicated upon the monarchy of the Father, okay? Uh, the Father is the principle, the source of the Godhead, okay? Um, uh, it, it, he is, uh, yeah, he's the fountainhead. Um, uh, uh, this changes that, you know, it gives us, you know, kind of a, a dyadic uh, Godhead or, you know, a confused father and son or, you, you know, uh, you know, kind of a, a semi sabellian uh uh, yeah. Godhead. It, it's just, it, it's problematic in too many ways. Now, I will say this, um, that, uh, and, you know, uh, if we understand, you know, by the filioque to say that the, that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and rests on the Son, or proceeds from the Father through the Son, we don't have any problem with that because that is made evident to us by the witness of scripture. Um, uh, but the problem with just the father and the son is that it lends itself to this, uh, uh, to this gross misunderstanding, you know, a misunderstanding, which has been promulgated to this very day, you know, so. Yeah. The f f um, father in, in the, or in an, or in the Orthodox point of view, with this heresy, as you would say, the filioque, would it set precedent and then other later heresies in Roman Catholicism are kind of downstream from this? It well, I, I, I will say that, it, you know, this is the one that kind of, uh, this was the heresy that, uh, it, you know, um, you know, severed uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the contact that we had with one another, um, you know, uh, back when we were one. Um, from really, uh, you know, the, the time of the split, whenever you want to frame it, you know, 1054 or 1204 or, you know, whatever, um, we can see that, you know, the Church of Rome embarks on a path of innovation mm. uh, and begins articulating as doctrine uh, and dogma uh, uh, things which, you know, before that had not been articulated as such, you know, um, uh, you get all kinds of all kinds of new things, all kinds of new ideas uh, that just, uh, it, you, you know, uh, that's not part of the deposit of faith that was uh, uh, that was given to the apostolic church, you know, um, and uh, and whatnot. So, you know, if you know, we're, if we're lax about one thing, or if we can embrace one innovation, who's to say we can't embrace two or three or four or five or six and so on and so forth. You know, you, 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 you get my drift here, you know? Um, and so, uh, so, so yeah, um, I, I, I don't know that I would say that Filioque is necessarily responsible uh, uh, for the subsequent developments uh, within uh, the church of Rome, but it's definitely the one that gets the ball rolling. So. Okay. Okay, and then in, and then you mentioned also the uh, in the filioque the love between the father and the son, um, not begets, but then that cre creates the holy. Uh, yeah, yeah, what's, yeah. It, it, well, well, I mean the the, what's the those, correct term. Yeah, yeah. Those who and just in absolute fairness to those who believe this particular doctrine, they would not say creates. They, they would what, not say creates. Uh, what would they uh, say? What well, they, 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 say? They, they would say he proceeds from the father and the son. Uh, and that, 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 they would use that language, okay. but, it, it, you know, um, so I don't think they would dare say that, you know, no, he's, he's a creation. They wouldn't say that. But the trouble is, if he has his being in part from the father and in part from the son, he cannot be co-eternal with either of them. Okay, uh, uh, he just he he cannot be he uh, uh, it, you know if the father gives one part and the son gives what is lacking, well he cannot truly be said to always be with them um, uh, at all times. 
you know, uh, he comes posterior, uh, you know, even if we're talking about this realm, which is, you know, without time. Yeah. So. When I, when I started looking into this, this uh, topic and I, and I, and I've been looking at some Catholic writing, I, the, the feeling I get is that it's kind of, kind of a lovely imagery. It's quite sentimental. This, it is, this, it, it this, is this quite this sentimental. Love is. between the father and the son and the Holy Spirit. Isn't that, you know, well, quite, yeah, yeah. Quite touching. I, I, I saw this, uh, I, I remember seeing this movie, I think it was called Evelyn, had Pierce Brosnan in it, uh, and it was about Ireland um, uh, in uh, the early 20th century when, you know, many children were being taken from the custody of their parents uh, and given into the custody of the state. Um, and, uh, and you know, uh, the, the sort of, um, you know, um, uh, the climax of the film uh, has him taking the stand uh, and uh, and he says that the uh, you know the model for uh, the uh, for the family for the Christian family is not the holy family but the holy trinity and then he gives this filioquist understanding of the holy trinity he said my father said the holy spirit is love uh, uh, you, you know uh, and and that's and that's what I want to have you know, I want to have love, uh, you know, for, for my children, you know, it, it is very sentimental, and it, it is, you know, very kind of touching. It does not describe the dynamic at work in the Godhead, though. Okay. It just doesn't. But that's why I think people have an attachment to it, so. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, uh, sentimentality reigns supreme, so. And, and I, and I cleared this with you before we started talking, Father. This, yes, sir. that I was going to bring this up, but the space that I move in sometimes, which is the LGBTQ space, um, for better or worse, um, <laughs> this, this issue of the filio quay first came up because I had written um, a blog article in which I mentioned there's a, a famous cathedral in France, uh, Vézelay, it's, it was the Shrine mm. of St. Mary Magdalene. Yes, and sir. There's a sculpture in there, it's quite odd, and I studied it in college when I was an atheist. And mm -hmm. it was um, the rape of Ganymede, which is from Greek mythology. And it's yes, sir. in the shape of a bird, Zeus takes this young boy and, and rapes him. And mm -hmm. I, I had written about this in the context of something else in the Catholicism. Mm -hmm. And I started hearing stories from people who, who had been abused in the Catholic church and said that the filioque was actually used as part of the grooming process which, mm. because it, it was odd when you mentioned that sort yeah. of love between the father and the son yeah yeah because of that space that i move in it it, it sounded homoerotic to me or it yeah have, yeah it can have homoerotic connotations and i have to say and some catholics hearing this or some christians are going to think this is far out field but it's it's actually quite mainstream Again, mm. some circles yeah. in Catholicism. Yeah. I mean, I have gone to talks at Catholic parishes where it does talk about this, and then downstream or trickle down from this mm. is is a theory that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, had had a homosexual relationship with John the Apostle. Yeah, yeah I've heard that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I guess the reason I'm bringing this up is because I think I think there is an interconnection, and I think there's some ramification. I just want to throw a couple of things out there. Now, John sure. Boswell was a very famous Catholic historian. Some people, I guess, would call him a theologian. Mm -hmm. He was at Yale. He he's, he mm -hmm. died of AIDS, mm -hmm. but um, he wrote that there was a special affection between Christ and John, and he wrote. Jerome argued that Jesus loved John the most because he was youthful and virginal, doubtless intending to remove any suspicions of sexuality, but not entirely succeeding, given that younger unmarried men are expected to provoke desire among older men in the pre-modern population of the Mediterranean. Sorry, Father. No, and, no. And then another major... And, John Boswell is still taught in Catholic circles, I have oh, to yeah, say. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm well aware. <laughs> yeah, and, and <laughs> he, I mean, his post-death, you know, God bless him, his post-death career has had ebbs and flows, and um, 
he's kind of at a summit right now. He's been revived yeah. by yeah. some certain priests and, and certain religious orders. Mm-hmm. And then and then there's John J. McNeil, who was a Jesuit, also yeah. passed away. He was pushing this stuff. He wrote, mm-hmm. John, the one, this is a quote, John, the one person among Jesus' disciples with whom we as gay people can frequently identify. If he was not actually gay himself, he's certainly depicted as having had a gay sensitivity. sensitivity. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. always refers to himself as the disciple who Jesus loved. Mm-hmm. This is also an Anglicanism, which is, of course, an offshoot of yeah, yeah, Catholicism. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. 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 Um, uh, Anglican Bishop Gene Robinson. So he said, in, mm-hmm. this, yeah. in this day of traditional family values, this man we follow was single. As far as we know, traveled with a bunch of men, had a disciple with whom, with whom was known as the one whom Jesus loved. Yeah. So sorry, sorry to go through all that with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, mean, I, it's, I, it, I it's think, there. I, I think, I mean, I'm making this argument, and Father, you don't have to agree with me, but I think this is where the, some of the stuff comes from. Mm-hmm. Well, it, you know, um, I, I, I definitely think that in the modern age, uh, because this is, you know, on everyone's mind, you know, questions of identity and the fact that sexual identity is even considered a category, uh, it, you know, um, it, you know, of course, these things are, are going to be um, talked about. It's, I mean, it's all projection, you know, none of that stuff is actually there in the text, you know, it's just, it's nonsense. Um, it, you know, it, it, it cannot authentically, uh, be accounted for and particularly not anyone who has, you know, even a cursory knowledge of Greek, uh, you know, for example, no, n- nobody could come to any of those conclusions. You just couldn't. You know, um, you know, people are, you know, reading back into the text what they want to see, and they're free to do that. You know, um, it, it, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I will say, you know, that this, um, uh, you know, this kind of, you know, gay understanding of, you know, the the filioque, um, as you have mentioned, you know, it is a real, um, uh, um, it is a real line of thought. Um, with uh, within those circles, um, and you know, um, and and Father, interrupt you real quick. What mm-hmm. I've noticed because I've been in gay. I mean, you mentioned this too off camera, but mm-hmm. queer queer theology. Yeah. I, I, and I I've been familiar with it for a long time, and I have to say, it doesn't stay in that bubble or yeah. in that little world. It does expand, mm-hmm. and it does start to. Yeah. encroach upon what you people could mm. say is the mainstream church or yeah 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 it has it, it has unintended consequences you know um it, 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 you know things which um you know no one really uh, you know thought would happen oh gee whiz you know we, we didn't think this would happen but it happened you know um and um and so yeah it, it's that's one of you know, uh, the, the possibilities, you know, uh, you know, again, you know, the, the Orthodox Church's objection uh, to the filioque is not specifically that it could lead to, you know, this particular line of thought, you know, among, you know, queer theologians. Um, you know, our objection uh, is simply the affront to the Holy Spirit's divinity, period. You know, uh, that's it. That's enough uh, for us to to say no. This is not acceptable. You know, um, it, we, you can't do, you can't do this. No one has the authority to alter the creed. Um, this was what was proclaimed at the Third Ecumenical Council in Ephesus. Um, that no one has the ability to alter the creed in any way, shape, or form, and that anyone who does so will find himself squarely outside the church. You know, um, this is enshrined in an ecumenical council, you know, um, and so, uh, you know, the, the penalty uh, was made clear, you know, um, and um, in, uh, in the Orthodox Church, you know, we, we take these things seriously, you know, um, if people, uh, you know, cross a line, you know, they're, there are consequences, you know, and so that's just, yeah, that's where we are. <laughs> why, why, why in orthodoxy hasn't there been so many like 
um, innovation or like these niche theologies like queer theology, liberation theology, feminist mm -hmm. theology? What, why has it, I mean, I'm sure there's strains of that, but it's, it's, well, never, it's never gained the ground like it has in the West. Yeah, it's not authentic. Um, uh, for one thing, um, uh, orthodoxy uh, did not organically experience modernity uh, and the birth thereof. Um, uh, you know, uh, modernity showed up uh, at our doorstep and shot us in the face in 1917. Uh, it, you know, that's that was that was, that was our that was first rough. encounter with modernity. You know, Do you think, Father, uh, that was just geographically where the Western, you know, is in Western Europe and Eastern Europe is a bit more protected from it? I mean, that that could be part of it. But I mean, really, it's more, you know, modernity is a way of thinking. Uh, it, it, you know, it's uh, it's a way of thinking as distinct from the pre-modern mind. Um, it, you know, the, the Orthodox Church, uh, you, you know, is still thinking predominantly with the pre-modern mind, you know, um, and, uh, and so, you know, when, um, you know, things like this come up, you know, whenever, uh, you know, someone has an idea about how we should rethink this or revisit this, it isn't given any traction, you know, we don't have a mechanism in place by which our understanding uh, of uh, you know the Trinity uh, or of Christ uh, uh, or of you know what marriage means you know the uh, you know uh, you know the proper understanding of human sexuality um, we don't have a mechanism by which any of those things could even be challenged. Okay, um, Father, you know, and, yeah, and yeah. Father, you never had a Reformation. No, there was yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and, Modernity is effectively born um, out of the uh, just the nonstop fighting uh, between the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant movement. It, you know, modernity is born from that and seeks to cherry pick those choicest bits, uh, or, you know, which seem pleasing. You know, oh, equality, we like that. You know, you know, oh, uh, you know, the dignity of human beings. You know, we we like that. You know, um, but all these other you know, doctrinal dogmatic statements. Well, we don't like those, you know, so you keep those and we'll hold on to these things. And we'll say that these things are just plain common sense, except yeah. they aren't, uh, uh, it, you know, uh, you know, what is, uh, what is touted as, you know, secular humanism, you know, the bulk of that is just stolen from Christianity, yeah. you know, um, uh, it, you know, the, the world before the gospel um, and indeed, look at places where the gospel has never really taken root. Um, such a world is a brutal place marked by inequalities, you know, uh, in, you, you know, where, you know, you just go your whole life never questioning the fact that a certain group of people are better than you and that you are better than a certain group of people. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, uh it, you know, uh, yeah, we, we've, not, we've not organically dealt with um, uh, modernity. And for that, I praise God. Uh, Father, <laughs> Father, I, I, Father, I wasn't going to go here, but, but since I've like shown any kind of interest in orthodoxy, um, <laughs> so, you know, some Catholics throw this out there. Well, the Orthodox <laughs> have sold out on contraception and marriage and, and divorce and remarriage. Yeah, as, as if those were articles of faith. Um, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm just saying, um, it, you know, uh, those, are, uh, those are red herrings. Uh, the, 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 those are not uh, actual uh, complaints. None of those things have to do with uh, uh, the divinity of Christ or the understanding of our salvation. Okay, if we're going to address divorce, you know, um, the Lord Jesus Christ himself allows for divorce in the case of sexual immorality. OK, if, uh, uh, you, you know, he says that if, you know, a man has, has a wife who uh, is unfaithful in this manner, he can divorce her. Mm -hmm. OK, so how do we how does that translate to divorce is not permissible? What okay. about, what, what about remarriage? 
Well, uh, 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 St. Paul uh, uh, talks about um, how remarriage uh, uh, can be blessed by the church. You know, he, he's, he says, if the widows can't contain themselves, uh, then they should marry. Uh, it, it, you know, that's St. Paul. That's not me. OK, he said it, not me. I'm just repeating him. OK, so don't get mad at me. No, no, um, no, no, no. I, I'm, yeah, playing, yeah. I'm playing devil advocate. I know, Father. I know, I know you are. Uh, 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 I know. Um, but, uh, uh, but, but yeah, and, and, and frankly, to say that the Roman Catholic Church does not have divorce or, or does not allow for divorce is just patently dishonest, okay? Well, Father, yeah. Father, it's, I have to, I don't mean to interrupt you, it's but okay. it's, I, I as, a, as somebody who's raised Catholic, drifted away, came back, there's a lot of stuff on paper in Catholicism. Yes, yes. It's not, yeah, it's Does not. Does it translate to the reality? No, you know. because because there's a bait and switch a bit. Because when I came to Catholicism and I read the Catechism ahead of time and read what they taught on homosexuality, I was like, "Well, this yeah. is really clear cut. This this is great." And, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and when and, I when I got yeah. into it, I went, "Well, this is not what they're teaching." <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the uh, when the rubber meets the road, uh, uh, there's kind of a chasm between the practice and the Catechism. You know, um, and uh, and yeah, that that's just uh, that's just kind of the case. You know, uh, you know, I would say, you know, if if anything, the the phenomenon of the annulment is worse than divorce, um, because it's taking a it's taking a sacrament of the church, um, it's taking a mystery of the church, and <clears throat> looking for looking for imperfections, uh, uh, you know, so as to render it invalid, okay, which this is highly problematic. And really, if you want, you learn everything you need to know about Roman Catholic sacramental theology by studying the annulment, okay, because if this principle can be applied here, it can be applied to the other sacraments as well, okay, you can render the Eucharist void, okay, you can render baptism void, uh, uh, you know, if it's not done uh, in the proper way, if the hocus pocus is not, you know, uh, Father, uh, pro properly yes. for, for, performed. Yes, sir. Father, not to not to bog you down. What's the process? I don't I don't know if you can if you can condense it or distill it in the Orthodox Church for someone to divorce and remarry in the church. Yes, sir. Um, uh, the um, sorry, sorry, that's a big question. Sorry, it, 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 you know, that's pretty. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it, it really kind of, um, um, the various jurisdictions uh, have um, different particular ways of dealing with this, um, but these are differences of degree, not differences of kind. You know, um, uh, there are some who um, insist that a, an ecclesiastical divorce must be obtained. Uh, you know, that is, if the church united you, it's only the church who can, you know, um, dissolve that union. Um, some won't be so, um, uh, 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 so insistent that one, you know, obtains something like that. Um, you know, the, uh, the church allows, uh, the church allows for divorce according to the criteria that the Lord Jesus Christ set out, um, you know, in, uh, in cases of abuse, uh, where, you know, the, um, the spouse is just afraid for their safety or, you know, afraid for the safety of the children, you know, um, I, I, you know, St. John Chrysostom, uh, uh, preached in one of his sermons in Constantinople, he said, all you guys, you beat your wives, you're all going to hell. Wow. Every last one of you, you know, you can imagine kind of the gasp uh, that may have been uh, uttered in the uh, uh, the late fourth century church where, you know, some of these guys had never heard this before. He said, because when did Christ ever deal with us that way? Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, uh, so, you know, uh, 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 abuse, infidelity, you know, th these these kinds of things. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it's it's tragic. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's positively tragic, but it can be allowed. Um, uh, and, uh, and the, uh, and, and the evil of, uh, divorce, um, is, uh, is, is preferable to, you know, the, uh, the greater evil that can be brought through, you know, a spouse being killed by an abusive spouse, that sort of thing, you know, um, it just, um, 
it, it, it just is, you know, um, you know, uh, to, um, uh, but to tackle the issue of, uh, of uh, contraception. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say the Catholics say that you guys have pulled out and you allow artificial contraception. Yes. <laughs> and anyone who thinks that natural family planning isn't artificial, um, I, I, I honestly, I can't do anything for you uh, because it is. Uh, it, it, you know, um, uh, it, it just uh, it, uh, it, it positively is, uh, you know, there, there are no means by which to um, take a woman's temperature uh, in the fourth century, uh, it, you know, or, uh, you know, to give her a saliva test, it, you know, there, there, there just weren't, um, you know, the, um, uh, the, the church does not allow for abortion uh, or abortifacient uh, contraception, you know, we're not, we're, we're not budging on that. You know, um, uh, uh, the the biggest you know question that we would ask anyone who is considering you know uh, you know using contraception is, what are your motivations? You know what uh, you, you know why are you doing this? You know, um, are you doing this because you have goals and you know career wise and travel wise and you guys want to do things? You know. Well, if that's the case, then it sounds like you're kind of putting yourselves at the center of the equation. Um, and in those cases, you know, using contraception would indeed be sinful because, you know, you're, you're fleeing responsibility, you know. Um, um, or is it the case that, you know, you've got, you've got five children, you, you know, you're broke uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, you don't know how you're going to be able to, you know, uh, afford any more children, you know, uh, 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 you know, one's motivations have to be considered in this, you know, uh, the thing in and of itself uh, is not necessarily, you know, uh, good or bad. And the thing in and of itself is not new either, you know, um, it, it, you know, there are, uh, you know, there are methods of, uh, you know, contraception that existed in the ancient world, uh, in the world of antiquity and late antiquity. This is not new, you know, um, it, you know, what the church asks us to consider are, you know, our, what are our motivations? You know, uh, uh, that's it. Yeah. What, what I have found, and I, I guess, I, I mean, I'm a single guy, those things don't, you know, have any divorce and contraception have no impact sure. on me personally. Sure. But, but w why, you know, it's, it's come into my, you know, frame of, of reference is that it's difficult as a, as someone who's been a Roman Catholic to express interest in orthodoxy, because there seems to always be this fight. Well, the Orthodox have done this, you know, they have sold out on this. And yes. Then, yeah. You know, and I haven't seen it so much on the Orthodox side, but then the Orthodox, yeah. I guess, could say, well, the Catholics are heretics in this area or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so un it's so unhelpful because when I, I've been reading Both a lot of yeah, yeah. I've been reading a lot of Orthodox material. It's so rich. And mm -hmm. the the history and the saints and yeah. the spiritual writings, which I think are not accessible or not available or not you know, uh, discussed in Roman Catholicism, and it, it's so sad. Yeah, yeah, uh, you, you know, if, if you want to talk about, uh, you know, patristics in Roman Catholic circles, generally, they just hand you copies of Augustine, and that's it. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we can't talk about the Cappadocians, uh, you know, we can't, uh, you know, talk about John of Damascus, we can't, uh, uh, we, we can't talk about, uh, you know, any number of things, uh, you know, the whole choir of the fathers you know it's, it's just augustine and then if you want to read anyone else they move you to the medieval period you know where uh, you know the church of rome has markedly changed directions you know and, and so uh, so yeah yeah it's just it's just one of those things yeah it, it's tragic really really too one of, one of the things that that i've liked a lot about orthodoxy and and i've kept you too long but i'll let you go one of You're the things fine. i've really liked about orthodoxy too is especially in my stage in life right now, there's a big focus on, on suffering. Yeah. It's, it's huge. It's, it's, it, it, it can be sometimes a downer. It's like reading the Psalms, but, but mm -hmm. I bought, yeah, there's a lot of focus. 
Well, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, it, it's it's important that we understand, uh, you, you know, uh, you, you know, why that is uh, an emphasis um, and why that is important. You know, um, uh, because you know the Lord Jesus Christ hasn't come to take away our suffering. No. You know, um, uh, it is not the case that you know God wants us to be happy. Um, uh, that's that's not it. And to say that you know to you know a modern Christian, what God doesn't want me to be happy? Yes, I am here to tell you, God is positively uninterested in your happiness. Um, uh, that uh, uh, you know, uh, people think atheism would be preferable. Um, uh, God is, uh, God is interested in the completion of our creation, um, in our restoration, in, uh, um, in, in us, uh, you know, becoming who we are meant to become. He is interested in us being holy. Um, and he doesn't take away our sufferings. He doesn't take away, you know, the problem of evil. He comes and he suffers. He fills our sufferings with himself mm. so that in our sufferings, we have immediate access to him. You know, uh, and, you know, think about how you have been debased in your life, as painful as that is. You know, were you ever ill used? So was Jesus Christ. You know, were you ever falsely accused? So was Jesus Christ. Were, you know, uh, were you ever, uh, you, know, you know, just ground down to the positive depths of human misery? So was the Lord Jesus Christ. He has filled our sufferings with himself. Um, uh, so there is no place, uh, nothing that we can suffer that he himself has not suffered. You know, um, and this is important. He has taken our sufferings and exalted them to the right hand of the Father. Amen. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Hey, thank Go you. For, yeah, thank you for spending this time with me. I, I, I think Always I, I think I, I did stretch my limits. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're you're quite all right, buddy. Uh, uh, it, it's it's always I, a joy talking to you. <laughs> you, uh, 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 it, you know, you're my kind of people. So uh, I, I uh, think so I understand. I think I understand a, a better, better that whole aspect of the filioque and and and, th and thank it's you. important. It is. It is. And uh, do you mind, Father, um, giving me a blessing and then anybody listening or, or watching? Do you mind? Absolutely. Bl the blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love of man, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. The Lord bless you and preserve you and keep you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Hey, God bless Thank you, you for having me, Joseph. Um, I, and uh, I hope we can talk soon, okay? Yes, yes. And in the link to this video, everybody, I'll put, um, excuse me, in the description of this video, I'll, I'll put the link to my other conversation with Father Fodius that I had earlier. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks again, Joseph.